Hello, hello, and welcome to another exciting episode of Skeptics and Seekers Sunday Sermon. This is your host, David Johnson. Mac will be along shortly, but uh, I want to go ahead and get started uh, so I can get some other things done uh, today as well uh, as do this show and put it up for you. Uh, I wanted to go ahead and make a few comments uh, while we're waiting on Mac about comments on the board. So first of all, uh, everybody is welcome to comment on the board. This is not a private club, although all internet communities that I have ever encountered, and I've encountered a lot of them because I'm, on the, I'm in the internet a lot. <laughs> they look like private clubs. They look like clicks, niches, and it takes a while before people start recognizing your comments and kind of admitting you into the conversation. So you can you can write anything you want to on a discussion board, as long as it's part of the, the policies, it's fine. People may or may not read it, and they probably won't respond for a while. This is, it's just the nature of communities and the internet is not really any different when it comes to that and for us is not any different when it comes to that although i think that we have a pretty good community of regulars so when you comment for the first time people usually greet you people usually engage with you uh you know the the regulars who comment want to engage uh and so you can expect some engagement uh, with your post. We're all very busy people. You know, we have lives outside of the internet, um, but uh, you know, it's a pretty good community. So the first thing I want to say is for all of you who, out there who listen to the show uh, and know about the site, but don't currently interact on the site, welcome. You are welcome. This is an open, community. Now, uh, there has been a little bit of uh, discussion this week uh, on the board about basically how conversations work. Because conversations that are interesting uh, are, are things that we want to get involved with, whether we were you know, the initial participants of the conversation or not, it's on the, on the board. We're not following it in real time. We have jobs. Sometimes our employers expect us to do our jobs. <laughs> and so uh, sometimes, you know, we have to wait to a break or, you know, the weekend maybe uh, before we even see a comment that's already a conversation that we would like to participate in. And so there has been some question about the proper etiquette, whether you can interrupt, quote unquote, interrupt a conversation online. Let me just say on an open forum online, it is impossible to interrupt a conversation. The nature of the forum is open. There are no closed doors. There are no cul-de-sacs where you, you head off and have a conversation. It's all an over, open conversation. Let me explain why that is, though, in case, once again, you're, you're a little bit new to this and do not understand uh, how this etiquette works and why it can't work any other way. Uh, so let's say I comment. I, I, I make an original post. Uh, I do uh, one of my classic uh, TLDR posts posts. Great. Uh, a few people read it and they want to add to it. They're excited about saying something about it or they want to tell me that I'm an idiot. Either, either way. Um, and so they do. So they're the first person to comment. Is it now a closed conversation because I have made a post in someone commented. No, it's still an open conversation. Okay, what if I respond to their comment? Now, is it closed? You, I mean, I 
put the post up there. Someone was Johnny on the spot. They saw it within a couple of minutes. I responded to them within a couple of minutes. A conversation has begun. Is it closed? Are you too late now? Of course not. Of course not. Maybe you see it that afternoon. Maybe you see it three days from now. Maybe you see it a week from now. We're still, we're still at it. But you're just now seeing the comments. And you need to get in there and say something because maybe it's comment number 13, you know, down the list. But that's something that you know something about or uh, have some questions about or a comment about. And so you reply to it. Have you butted into a conversation? No. You should never feel like you have butted into a conversation. It is always open. You know, I'm not the first one to join conversations a lot of the times because I'm doing other stuff or I may not see it. Discuss me, I've coughed up a hairball. I may not see a comment uh, for three days. Do, oh, is it too late to comment? The other, uh, the other concern is, well, you know, if you see a conversation going, you just wait till it's over. Certain conversations have been going on for years. <laughs> you know, you know, we go to different boards and new topics, but it's the same conversations we've been going on for years. Uh, that's not practical. How do you know when a conversation is over? Okay, uh, someone made a good point. Great. Uh, conversation over. Now can I say something? No, the other person responds to that. Th there's no way to know when a conversation is over. It's simply not how the internet works. And so you can't expect that. And I don't want anyone to feel like a uh, conversation has been chilled. Uh, we are not chilling conversation on the board. If someone says something, they write something on the board and there's a reply button under it, you can reply. You are not breaking social etiquette. You are not breaking a forest rule. You're not breaking uh, an internet uh, norm. It's an open forum and it has to be that way. Because the alternative to that is that no one ever comments. And I want to encourage more people to get involved, not fewer. Now, there are a couple of options for you if you're a person who has trouble with a mini on mini conversation, because it, this is a skill to learn and you don't necessarily learn it in school. <laughs> you can. Um, you know, it's part of socialization. It happens at you know parties or you know any number of things where you learn to be in a group and you're talking to people and many people are talking, and it's just kind of this open conversation where people come in and out of it. Uh, but if if that's not a thing that you're able to do, this is not a criticism. You should probably not have conversations on the board because it's a public forum and that's the nature of conversations and you're you wouldn't be bad there wouldn't be anything wrong with not having those conversations david russell when he was a host of the show he almost never <laughs> joined in the conversations it's fine that was that was fine that wasn't his bag uh dale always enjoyed uh the conversations right so uh if you uh go outside of sns randall rouser also uh you know, at one point, a uh, two or three time guest on um, SNS, we'll have him again for us. Um, Randall Rouser, when you see him on the board, he responds to everybody. He's, his comments are open. Everybody comments. He has many on many conversations, one on many, many on many. Uh, this is just how it happens. And if, so if you want to see what it looks like when a Christian has this kind of conversation, uh, Randall Rouser. If you want to see what it looks like when a Christian doesn't have this kind of conversation, William Lane Craig. He doesn't comment. <laughs> he doesn't, he's not, he's not going to get in some internet uh, brawl. I don't know that he would even be good um, in that kind of forum. And so if you're good at that forum, use the forum that's the kind of forum for us is. If you're not good at that forum, abstain from commenting. And that's, that's okay too. But let me offer you one other option. Because you may not like any of those options. Uh, too bad, actually, if you don't. But if you, if you want another option, there are other options. This is the only other one that I know that kind of makes sense. Uh, and that is uh, go onto the Forest Discussion Board and at the end of your post... Uh, Put your social media uh, contact 
handle, whatever it is, in your comment. So if you uh, have a Facebook account or a Threads account that's public, put that out there. And then if you get into a conversation, you can just ask the person, hey, uh, log in on Facebook and uh, we can uh, have a private message over there. Because I think that they have a mechanism for private messaging, I think. Uh, the company formerly known as Twitter, uh, X, you can DM people, uh, direct message. And so you can put your social media uh, contact there, you know, at whoever the heck you are. <laughs> and uh, and then say, look, this uh, conversation is really important. I'm, I'm having trouble keeping up. So direct message me um, over at there. And then you can do that. So that's that's another way to have a private conversation. Let me head off one suggestion that I've seen already, which is to uh, just ask David to make a connection. David is not going to do that. <laughs> uh, yes, I know a lot of people's email address. And someone might say, hey, would you send my email to so-and-so? Under certain circumstances, I would absolutely do that. But not under most circumstances. It shouldn't be considered a regular option. I'm not a matchmaker. Uh, everybody on the internet, uh, I assume, uh, on this board is a grown-ass adult, or they're doing the function of a grown-ass adult. And so you can grown-ass adult your way into figuring out a how to talk to each other offline, off the board. I am not going to get involved with a, oh, I gave someone an email address that I wasn't supposed to give them, uh, kind of a situation. So you can, once again, put your social media credentials on there and then take it off the board for private direct messaging. Uh, but the nature of the board, just a review, I think uh, I see Matt Mac uh, back on here, so I'm gonna pull him in. Uh, the nature of the board is public, is open, and d discuss, to my knowledge, has no direct messaging options. And so you do not have to worry if you see a comment that you find interesting two days, three days, a week after it was posted, and you want to say something that joins in the conversation. You, you don't have to ask. It's an open conversation, all right? Now, no one has to reply to you. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a thing as well. But we don't want to ever do anything that makes you feel like you can't get in the conversation because you weren't first. Um, the, the first shall be last, the last shall be first, uh, and the conversations will always be many on many unless you avail yourself of one of the other options to take conversations offline. So that's not that's not me trying to restrict uh, policy or me trying to you know create some draconian policy. It's the nature of the beast. I actually couldn't change it if I wanted to, and I don't. With that, we have a show to do, um, and we are bringing uh, Nietzsche uh, into the discussion. How are you doing, Nietzsche? Uh, I'm dead, but here I am. Well, you know the saying, God is dead, Nietzsche. Nietzsche is dead, God. Uh, <laughs> we could be both dead. It's it's a possibility, but uh, Mr. Uh, Mac Attack, were you able to hear me while I was uh, carrying on? Um, I only caught the last minute of that. Yeah. Okay. So rather than rather than recap that here, uh, I will re recap it at the end of the show for you, or you can okay. uh, go back and hear it at the beginning. Um, but what we want to do is get right into the program. Uh, because we have a very interesting discussion uh, ahead of, I hope it's interesting. Um, I find the topic interesting and challenging. It's, this is probably, I will warn everybody, going to be a two or three part series. And I have not mapped it out, but we will see how the discussion goes today and see which threads we need to uh, pull on a little bit more. This is not a topic that you can do in one show, you know, in an hour, hour and a half. So with that in mind, let's not try to do it all in one hour, an hour and a half. And uh, let's get going. The topic is 
uh, real Christianity. And the way I, I think the way I'm going to format this as far as the the uh, blog page is r slash were you a real Christian? Uh, I, I think that's I think that's the question. Um, a, a question that that will get a lot of engagement, but you could also ask is person blank a real Christian? You can ask, how do you know who a Christian is? How do you identify uh, a, a Christian when you see them? Uh, does the Bible have anything to say about how you identify a Christian? Um, is it important to be able to identify a Christian? And actually, I want to start there first. Uh, it's it's if, uh, if that's so right with you, Mac, I want to start with a why is this an important discussion? Why is it important to know if uh, someone is or was a Christian? Uh, you know, does it really matter how we identify other people? Um, are you asking in general or just uh, in terms of like, let's say I'm just walking around. Is it important for me to like see that person over there and let's say they're wearing a chain that has a cross on it and I'm saying, oh, that person's a Christian. Um, is that how you mean it? Or uh, I think I think how I mean it may be open to interpretation. So last week I started uh, things off with uh, uh, Aon Hersey Ali and uh, a video uh, discussion with her and Dawkins. And there's been a lot of question about whether Ayan Hersher Ali is a Christian or not, because she claims to be a Christian. And yet every time she talks, um, and, and when people listen to her carefully, they come away saying, I don't think she's a Christian. Um, uh, I don't think anyone, like, especially because I've heard different people give different takes, for example, on her specifically. And from the dialogue that she had with Dawkins in New York, uh, Dawkins came away saying, like, I believe you're a Christian, like after talking to her one on one. Right. In front of, Dawkins, like, Dawkins uh, also yeah. believes he also believes in a very liberal Christianity. So uh, a lot of Christians wouldn't uh, accept as Christians people that Dawkins, for instance, might accept as Christians. Well, I don't know what. So, like, I feel like during this show or this series, we're going to have to be de defining terms a lot. Because maybe what you think liber liberal Christianity is may not be what I think or what most people think or a lot of people think. So uh, as far as we're concerned with her testimony, she says she's a Christian and that's how we should take it. That's what she says. That's I mean, I, I don't think it's uh, right to say to a person who says I'm something, uh, no, you're not. Like if someone says, I feel transgender or I feel this way or I feel that way, I don't think uh, the right response, especially when we're dealing with matters of faith and anything else actually in our current uh, situation, our current culture, uh, you should be able to take that person at face value and then you could start with the questions and with the inquisitions. Okay. Uh, did I hear you correctly say that you should accept a person is a Christian if they say they're a Christian? Yep. Okay. Because it's uh, it's such a loaded term. Um, uh, I would like yeah. I'll talk to someone who says I'm a Christian, and then it's not enough for me to simply uh, take it like for me to impose what I think personally without knowing the other person. Like if I meet someone for the first time and they say I'm a Christian, then I'm going to believe them. But have when you we start talking your position more, yeah. on, have you changed your position on this? Because I know I that, have not changed. Okay, my position. Then there are a dozen or so people listening to this uh, who have already fired up comments on the board. Oh, I, I know saying, this is, saying this is what, what the heck, because, well, because you have been very vocal uh, about criticizing me when I have said we can know 
a person is a Christian because they say they're a Christian, and that's the only criteria that we can really use. If a person says they're a Christian, we don't really have the juice to say they're not. And you have been very quick to say, right. no, that is not correct. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I'm getting to the, 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 the part where once someone says, okay, we're still in the initial stages uh, of meeting a person, right? This is a, it's a blank slate. Let's pretend that we've never talked before about this. I'm explaining uh, just from the ground up how you could start with someone saying, I'm a Christian. And then when you talk to them and find out what they believe, you could tell them that they're not like actually a Christian. Like it's, I don't know if that's coming across and helping you out, but no, what I am we've objecting listened against- to, We've listened to uh, Ayan talk about her version of Christianity many times and we did the one I did the one show a couple of weeks ago three weeks ago now I think where she talks about it uh and I point out various in various places where she is uh where what she is saying is not consistent with Christianity uh, so we, we, I am I am looking at her confession uh, because every time she talks about it, that's a confession. And I'm looking at her confession, and I am comparing it to what, uh, in fact, things that you have specifically said about Christianity, and it and they don't match up. Right. And what I'm getting at is, first of all, when someone becomes a Christian, uh, it's not an expectation or a yoke to be put upon their shoulders that they have everything perfectly or that they articulate um, their faith in a way that you would expect to hear from someone who's been a Christian for a very long time. And so with Ali, like you say, you, you've heard her, like I listened to an interview she did with Glenn Scrivener this week, and she was pretty much saying what I hear Christians saying. So maybe the interviews that you've been watching have been uh, haven't been comprehensive. Whereas with this uh, interview that I saw, I'm going to post it on the board. Uh, she says that she does believe in Christ. She does believe in God. And she does see herself as a sinner and that the Christian worldview is what best, you know, like explains reality for her right, right well, now. I, I have not seen that. Have you posted it on the board already? No, I haven't posted it. Okay, I will so, post it though. Yeah. Well, that would that would be helpful because once again, all of her confessions that I've seen up to this point have been making Christians really cringe because she is not saying things. She has not been saying things. She's been very hesitant uh, to say the kinds of things that would um, be a full throated endorsement of Christianity. And so if you have such an interview to post, that would be great. But I, I don't think I'm wrong in what I've said based on interviews that I have seen, and especially the one that I posted before. But this this brings, so you were saying that you think she's a Christian on the basis of an of a confession that I have not heard. Of her profession, I'm, yeah. I, like I am saying, but of the yeah. confessions that I have heard, I would say that she's not a Christian at least under various formulations of being a Christian. So if all you had heard about her Christianity was her conversation with Dawkins, I'm not sure how you would say she was a Christian. Well, again, obviously during that talk, she was relaying her personal experience, like she was coming at it from a point of this is personal for me because of this, because of this. And I prayed and Dawkins is like, uh, you don't really believe all that other stuff in the Bible, do you? And she kept saying, wait, you're, you're coming at it from the wrong. Like she kept explaining to him, you're coming at it from the wrong direction because for her, she's saying she's had this personal experience. Um, and now she, like, she knows it's true. And right. Dawkins is like, what, but uh, this, like she kept like, they kept going back and forth. Yeah. Other, dimension, other dimensions of uh, reality, uh, sure. I'm sorry? Other dimensions of reality. That's what she kept talking about. Whenever Dawkins would try to pin her down, but do you believe that Jesus is God? 
and you would get something like other dimensions of reality. Um, you wouldn't get a yes. Well, she's still a new Christian. Like, so here's the thing that perhaps uh, is is kind of getting lost in this conversation so far is that in your mind you have an idea of what a Christian is. Perhaps has to believe X Y Z X Y Z. But like when someone becomes a Christian for the first time, um, like I said, it's not a yoke that makes sense to put on them to say that they have to now sound like William Lane, Lane Craig or they have to give the answers that you're used to or they have to talk a certain way or they have to say like if they're asked this question, they have to give an answer like to the best of her ability. She's trying to give an answer that makes sense to her right now. Okay. If you listen you to her five years from now she may be able to say something else. She may be able to answer the same question differently. And that's because Ooh, yeah, she's maybe, still... Yeah, maybe she'll actually believe it uh, then. <laughs> but because um, she doesn't seem to uh, now, or at least she I don't know how you can few, say that. She, did, but, she okay. didn't... A few, well, I haven't seen her interview with Scrivener. So if you've got some new data, uh, please put it on the board. I've seen other interviews and maybe... Uh, you know, like I said, if you've got some new interview because Christians have been trying to get out of her an actual confession they can get behind and they haven't been able to do it. So if if Scrivener managed to do it, love to see it. Um, that said, uh, Ali, we could set her aside for a moment and, because I'm, I'm still trying to figure out this n new position of yours because it's new to me. Do you believe that uh, a Unitarian is a Christian. Uh, before I answer that, I'll, I just want to point out the, the Scrivener interview is three weeks old. Um, so it's around the same time that the, the Dawkins thing came out. I'm right. So looking at it, it right out, now. If it came out that day or, or a day after or a week after, it's it's hardly, uh, I would I would not know it. <laughs> like it even has more views than the... <laughs> Hey, th that's cool. I imagine it would have a lot of views because it might be the first time she actually made a profession of faith that resembles Christianity. So I, I would love, I, like I said, I'd love to see it. Can't comment on it. I can only comment on the interviews she's made uh, before that time. Um, so that said, is a Unitarian a Christian? Um, what What is a Christian? How do you want, what, what does it mean to is be a, a Christian? U well, I'm, look, I, I'm not... Okay. I'm not, I'm not, oh. not ready to go there right now. All right. I, oh. Your definition, your because when we talk about this, it's always your definition of Christianity. Okay. So is a Unitarian a Christian? That's a yes or no question. No. Okay. So what if it's a new Unitarian, though? They just became a, a Christian, and they were uh, convinced to be a Christian by a Unitarian, and so they have done the Unitarian thing to uh, you know, profess Christianity. And, and they're as new to Christianity as Aeon is. Uh, and by the way, you say you know, she's about a year, but um, you know they're a they're a few month old baby Christian, and they're Unitarian. Are are they a Christian? Do you still say no? Well, no. And I'm trying to uh, qualify the answer based on how you understand it. Like based on if they were taking a survey, then yeah, they would be a Christian. If they're writing down, I'm a Christian. But based on what it means to be a Christian, which hopefully at some point uh, we'll talk about, they are not a Christian because in some sense, uh, there's a strong understanding that uh, Christianity is not just another religion where you have the right propositions or you do the right things. That's not how uh, someone becomes a Christian, not by doing things or affirming certain things. So. For Unitarian, as far as I understand it, uh, and there's a Unitarian church uh, right where I live, uh, it's not that you're exclusively uh, a Christian. It's that you are uh, you're you're seeing the validity in all other religions. So based on that definition, how you can't be a you can't be a Christian if you're also uh, a universalist who says that all the Muslims also have it right. And the Hindus and the Taoists and the atheists, I don't see how that rhymes with uh, a definition of Christianity proper. Okay, so uh, once again, just working with your definition at the moment, we'll broaden definitions out a bit. A new Unitarian, not a Christian, 
a new Aeon, whatever the heck she is, is a Christian, even though up until three weeks ago, she had never made a confession of faith that resembled Christianity. Well, but, I, but, I think but that for that her, last, but for um, her, you're like, well, but she's a new Christian. You don't expect her to know the theology. But for a Unitarian, no, it's not a Christian. I expect them to know uh, the theology. Explain well, to me the difference. First of all, I, I reject that characterization that she'd never like. Uh, just because she's not done it in an interview that you've seen doesn't mean that she hasn't professed it either to other people, people closer to her, people in her church. That does it doesn't mean that because that's kind of what you're basing it off of. Okay, and I only not we only know about the we only know about the public confessions. Okay, so once right, again, if you not, if you have a public confession uh, that precedes the time that I'm talking about, love to see it. I also would love to see the one that you're talking about that came after. But the the whole knock on Ali's uh, Christianity was for a good year. She refused to say things that equaled to what I think most Christians considered a Christian confession. That that was the thing, and people kept trying to get her to say things, and she would just uh, dodge and deflect, kind of like she did with Dawkins. So uh, you can say, well, maybe privately she believed the right things. Okay, but you're giving her that that benefit of the doubt, and you're not giving Unitarian any such thing. And I'm trying to figure out, based on public statements now, and, and also just based on what you know Unitarians believe, because that's a hypothetical person, why would you give Ali the benefit of the doubt when we have her actual statements, and you wouldn't give a Unitarian the benefit of the doubt, they both have found Jesus in different ways. All right, I'll try and answer again uh, what I said before. Uh, someone who believes in Unitarianism, Unitarian Universalism in this case, does not believe that Jesus is who he said he was. That's, that's it. That's as short as I can make it. Because if you're giving validity to all the other religions, then you're not. You're not a Christian in the New Testament sense of the word, or in any any other sense of the word. You may be in a modern way, you're a Christian, but not in the New Testament sense of the word, and not in the way that Christianity has historically been understood. When we talk about Ali, again, you're putting too much emphasis on public confessions. Um, uh, you expect her to answer questions a certain way, but she doesn't, and then you you make the judgment that she's not a Christian. Uh, I I don't see the validity in that. Uh, she says she's a Christian. She gives uh, answers that you don't like. Well, I think I'll go with her and what she says over and against uh, how you feel someone should be answering. Because I don't think you can impose your standards of what someone should say in terms of their personal faith and say, well, they're not answering that question the way I would answer it. Therefore, they're not a Christian. Outside like, of, this outside is too of different. The um, this is two different issues entirely. They're not outside the same thing. The, outside of the Scrivener uh, interview that you're talking about that uh, I have not seen, I don't know who, who all has seen it, uh, she has oh. not answered the question uh, in the affirmative that she believes that Jesus is God when asked. So you're, you're saying that the Unitarian doesn't believe that Jesus is God, but she didn't seem to believe that Jesus was God either. That's her, I, I don't, that's I don't her know public what... her public confessions, and if you haven't seen more than one of them, we can just talk about the Dawkins one, which is one that I did on the show. And Again, she would not say it. She she refused to say it. And so, I... you know, if if we're just dealing with what people say they believe, neither her nor the unit the, the hypothetical Unitarian uh, would be willing to say that Jesus is God. Again, this is very cut and dry for me. Maybe it will be for the audience too. But like you're basing, you're basing reality based on one interview that you've watched, or 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 even the the Scrivener one that you haven't watched, and you're saying that because she doesn't say this sentence, and this she doesn't say it like this, or she doesn't say it specifically, then that means she's not a Christian. I I don't see any validity in any of that. I don't see any validity in saying that because someone hasn't publicly said something the way you think they should say it, then that means that they're not a Christian. Do you know that uh, Unitarians, the with, do you know that the Unitarians with, would say that Jesus is divine? Lots of people would say that, but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean like believing Jesus is divine makes you a Christian. Like lots of 
Buddhists and Hindus say like, yeah, Jesus was a, was a divine person, like was one of our gurus. That doesn't mean they're Christians. Um, is that the criteria you're using? Well, I'm trying to understand the criteria you're, you're using to cancel out the Unitarian out of hand. Well, I, I just said it. I, maybe I'm, right, let not, me say I'm it not getting it. Yes, yeah, you're it not again. getting it. All right, let me say it again. <laughs> okay. Basing like all of this based on what Jesus said. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes through the Father but through me, right? Uh, Unitarians, uh, universalists say, you know, yeah, Jesus said that. But there's also other ways, you know, if you're just a good atheist, if you're a good Muslim, you're a good Hindu, then you you make it to heaven either way. It's all about your good works. It's all about how good you are as a person. You don't really, there's no, ex like, yeah, Jesus said it was exclusive, but it's not really exclusive. That's what a Unitarian believes. Now, if I was talking to a Unitarian and I, I would ask them personally, one to one, is this what you believe? Maybe they'll say, uh, actually, no, I I i thought and this is something that happens all the time uh where people join a uh a church like a unit a, a denomination and they say uh well i joined with the belief that this was the case but then uh it's not the case that's not what i it's not what i believe and so that's why it's so important to have personal conversations with people as opposed to like just throw casting out a huge net and saying that christianity or reducing christianity simply to it being just a matter of affirming the right propositions because the atheist who knows the most theology versus the christian who knows the least theology uh the atheist who knows the most accurate thoughts about what christianity is and does not believe is not a christian while the the christian like this are if we rank all the christians that are alive today the one who knows the least about god that person is more of a Christian than the atheist who went to Princeton and knows the whole Bible back and forth. That's all I'm saying. Okay. I've been very much trying hard to keep up with your actual answers to the specific question of why the Unitarian is not a Christian. So I, I keep addressing those specific things and uh, people will just have to maybe roll back the tape uh, and pick up the answer that you gave after each time I ask it and then listen to the All right, one final time that then. I gave. One final time and then hang, we can hang, move on. Hang, hang on because you just gave another answer though that I that you know the Jesus exclusivity answer. So we believe that Jesus is the exclusive way and that's why Unitarians aren't a Christian. That's why Aeon might be a Christian. Except um, except Aeon <laughs> believes that Richard Dawkins is a Christian. She has said on a number of occasions that you are the most Christian person I know, and she knows her priest. Uh, so uh, I don't I, I don't see how she is getting the benefit of the doubt, but the hypothetical Unitarian doesn't get the benefit of the doubt because every answer you give, I can map that onto something that Ali has said. And and yet you would say, no, but she's just a young Christian who doesn't know the doctrines, but the Unitarian, not a Christian. And that's the part that I don't understand. That's all right, Sam. Um Again, let me let me answer. And again, the, the benefit of this is people can go back and listen. I have answered, I have given the same answer three times the same, maybe I've elaborated more on the last one. And the answer is this, the Unitarian does not believe that Jesus is the only way. I've said this before, I'll say it again, I'll say it right now. If your base, your primary belief is that Jesus is not the way to heaven, the way to be reconciled with God, then you are not a Christian. Now that's a propositional uh, statement. Um, and that's that's uh, a yeah, statement well, that you would say on. that someone um, would. Um, okay. Let me let me answer and then and then you can respond. I, I'm um, sorry, I thought you I thought you were. No, done. I wasn't. I wasn't done. Um, so that's a propositional statement. Now I I don't know why I I genuinely I genuinely did not come into this today thinking we're going to talk about Ayan, but this is how it's been. So if Ayan believes that uh, believes just like the Unitarian, right? then she's also wrong. So we're not just taking it like all, we're not taking it all like uh, wholesale, 
right? That's why what I said, like when the beginning, when you when when you're navigating this, um, the thing is to ask someone, are you a Christian or not? And they say, yes, I am. And then you go from there. You start talking, okay, so what do you believe about the claims that Jesus made? And then based on what the Unitarian claims to believe, and this might not always be the case, they don't believe that Jesus is the only way. Now, if I were to ask Ayan that same question, and your hang up is that she doesn't say this publicly, uh, and if I were to ask her the same question and she gives a Unitarian answer, then that would mean she's not a Christian. So it's not as black or white as you intend it to be or you're making it out to be. Like they're not in the same boat. And I'm I'm very careful about nuance and, and taking people at their word. And then the, the issue where the issue arises is when we get into the specifics. Uh, and when we get into the specifics, that's when people tend to get upset and to say, well, well, that's not fair or how dare you say that or how do you know or what like what makes you the judge and all these other things. But I, all I'm saying is that at that first step, when someone says I'm a Christian, I affirm it. I don't walk around with a with a with a list trying to check off like how many doctrines do you have? Right. We go from the, the main ones all the way to the bottom. But like it's not based on just me saying like, well, like someone can go to the same church I go to and not be a Christian. And that's not based on anything that I can see uh, with my own eyes, but it's, uh, it's not, it's not a question of like just throwing out a blanket statement. Right. So uh, when she tells Richard Dawkins, you're the most Christian person I know that automatically excludes her from being a Christian as far as I'm concerned. Okay. All right. All right. Because Richard Dawkins is not a Christian. Okay. Uh, he's, he's a, he, he claims to be a cultural Christian. Elon Musk claims to be a cultural Christian, also not a Christian. <laughs> so, um, but that's fine. All right. Right. So, um, what I, what I see is giving one the benefit of the doubt, saying very similar things, uh, and as another who you wouldn't give the benefit of the doubt, but you already have this kind of, uh, at, at least this one doctrinal thing in your mind that a person has to know or assent to in order to be a Christian. And so let's, let's pick up there, because we can begin building some definition on top of that. So... Uh, one doctrine that you think is necessary for a person to be a Christian, whether they're a baby Christian or not, is to understand that Jesus is the only way to salvation. Now, have I said that correctly? Um, just to clarify, I do give both people the benefit of the doubt, as I said. If someone says something, I'll, I'll take them at their word. And then when we get into the nitty gritty, that's when stuff starts to unravel. And yes, that is that is one of the mo that is one of the main things. Um, it's about the nature of salvation itself. And if salvation is merely about doing good works, trying to be a good person, then ultimately that person, they could be saved but they don't understand what the gospel is, and the gospel is always of first importance. If they could be saved thinking a wrong thing about salvation, then maybe they weren't so wrong after all. I don't know what that means. If, if you're saying they think what they think is wrong about salvation, and yet they're saved anyway, then they weren't wrong. I don't... I don't see how that makes. I don't see how you make that connection. I, I, because I'm they were even saved. struggling to understand how. Because they were saved. <laughs> that's the well. That's the thing. No, it, so that doesn't make sense to me. You're, you're telling it. You're telling a saved person that they're wrong about uh, salvation. No, I mean, yeah. Well, because again, there's precedent uh, in the Bible in the New Testament for people who are saved to have bad theology. A good example of that would be um, Apollos, who it says in Acts, he was he was arguing vigorously with the Jews and telling them about how Jesus was the Messiah and everything. And then it says Priscilla and Aquila had to pull him aside and explain to him things more accurately. 
Right. Well, or he was baptizing. Famously, he was baptizing uh, in John's baptism. Now, what we don't have in the Bible is no, a clear explanation. Yes, it does. It doesn't say that. It says he was instructing. Uh, he was okay, instructing let, the Jews. Let's just stop. Let's stop now. We have a claim uh, okay. and a counterclaim. Uh, okay. Let's one of us is wrong. Fact, so okay. let's let's learn together uh, because we know exactly where it is. Uh, so. If you don't mind doing the reading, I'm sure you've got a Bible near to hand. I'm not going to bother. Acts 19. And um, you can uh, just start at the first few verses and let's see. Because my memory is uh, that he was um, baptizing with John's baptism uh, or that he had had only John's baptism but did not know about the other baptism. We don't have a lot of detail, but I think we have that much. You're saying that we don't, so let's just look. Take a moment out of the show, look at the source material, and see what it says. All right, Acts 18, verse 24. I think it's 18. That's where it starts. Okay, Uh, so is that the end of 18? End of 18. Yeah, okay. From 24 to, uh, hold on, I just switched to 19. I'm looking at it through my computer. Okay, it says, now a Jew named Apollos a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus. He was an eloquent man, competent in the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in spirit, he spoke and taught accurately the things concerning Jesus, though he knew only the baptism of John. He began that's, to speak that's what boldly. I said. You said he was baptizing. He, he knew only the baptism of John. Right. And then verse 26, he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, but when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and explained to him the way of God more accurately. Right. So the, so the only thing that we see in that text that we might say is an inaccuracy, because it said in the passage in 18, he was, uh, he was a, 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 teaching the right things about Jesus. But it says that he only knew the baptism of John. That's that's seems to be the problem. So well, I, I I I believe that that is what I said. You said again. You can always rewind and listen. Uh, you said he was baptizing, um, but he it, it, that's what I was taking contention with. Like yeah. it doesn't say he was baptizing, but the the main point was that it says. Uh, other Christians took him aside and explained to him the way of God more accurately. Right. So what did, needs, they, so what did says, they explain? Well, <laughs> I've, I've tried. Let me, let me let me finish my point. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was telling people about Jesus. It says he was saying things that were accurate about Jesus. But Priscilla and Aquila take him aside and they explain it mo- even more accurately, right? And so. The, 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 the issue about being a Christian isn't that you have perfect theology at, and like you're not able to learn more accurate thoughts about about your faith, about God, about everything. But that, however, doesn't mean that if Priscilla and Aquila heard him say something that was a little bit out of bounds, they could have said that guy definitely is not a Christian because he just said this. And we all know Christians don't say the The passage this. said that he uh, taught accurately about jesus he knew jesus you can read it again you, right the, right the 18, i'm the one who it just, up. Re, just read it just yeah, just and <laughs> just look I'm, at it I, just I, listen I read to what it. you're saying <laughs> i read it and also you're you're ignoring the la- the latter part no that i'm not i'm also. not ignoring it at all i am trying to teach you more accurately the scripture mm-hmm. <laughs> but no, but you um, do not have the humility to listen to someone with decades of experience here. <laughs> I could help it, you. <laughs> it, it doesn't like no because again you're you're just treating this flippantly. But that's okay. Uh, I'm not treating it, it flippantly. I've preached no, on this a thousand uh, times. I actually have bona fide decades of experience that you do not have, and you are not listening. <laughs> I just because you know, all right, this is turning into uh, listen to me, kid, um, type conversation, which, which, okay, it's fine if you want to have that conversation. Listen but what Luke. I'm saying is, no, <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm explaining, like, I'm the one who brought it up. So, um, look, look at what it says. It says they explained it more accurately. So, he had a the, the, the knowledge that he had about Christ 
was sufficient for him to go about and preach and teach other people. But it right, says but there that was, even there was never the question of whether he can, was a Christian. You're not you're not listening to me, and I feel like that's that's always been the biggest uh, breakdown. That you you never let me finish a thought. So when I finish, I'll let you know. So here it is. Um, yes, it never came up that whether he was a Christian or not. What I'm saying is that the way people act today, like perhaps people like you, is that if you heard someone saying something about Jesus that you, you, you knew wasn't accurate, your first instinct would be to say that person is not a Christian because, you know, like, this is what, this is what it is, this is what it is, this is what it is. Whereas for me, I have this precedent in scripture where I can see someone saying something about Jesus, like someone I disagree with, like William Lane Craig, and say, yes, he's explaining the way of the Lord more accurately. He's, he's giving the gospel to people. However, there's a more accurate way of, of explaining things. That does not mean that that person that I'm listening to is not a Christian. That's the main difference between you and me. You're saying that if you hear someone saying something that is not 100% uh, based on how you understand things, then you already have the precedent to, tell, to say that person is not a Christian. Whereas I'm saying that's not necessarily the case. That is incorrect. Yeah. You, you have not, in fact, um, fed back to me my words and thoughts accurately uh you you are it, it's i can't figure out which side of the net you're on um you you say well a person doesn't have to know everything accurately to be a christian and so i might say something like yeah like for instance that jesus is the only way to salvation and you'd be like no they have to know that accurately and then you bring up and then you bring up uh uh apollos who was knowledgeable, uh, accurate, had accurate knowledge about Jesus, and was not saying things like Jesus wasn't the only one, but he did have uh, only the knowledge of John's baptism. Um, so that clearly didn't disqualify him from being a Christian. But had he been teaching, for instance, Jesus is one of many ways to salvation, in your estimation, that would disqualify him from being a Christian. Um, so it's, it's, I'm trying to figure out what these things are that disqualify people from being a Christian and what qualifies them from being a Christian. So right now, the first qualification is one that I would agree with and have been saying for years, they say they're a Christian. Now, frankly, I have no way of interrogating, uh, people after they've said they're a Christian. So that's what I'm left with. They're a Christian. Um, and that has been a source of contention on the board. Uh, no one is going to be gaslighted <laughs> in this way. We've been reading the boards and having these conversations for a very long time. So uh, all we can say of the vast majority of people who say they're a Christian is that they're a Christian because that's what they've said, and we can't interrogate it further. Now, when they say more things, uh, you know, and they do public interviews and blogs and podcasts uh, and, and videos uh, about what they believe, then we can interrogate that. Uh, and we can say, okay, so their profession of faith, now I understand it better. And they are saying things that are contrary to an actual Christian profession of faith. I, I think we agree with that too. And so once again, trying to put together these things where you can say, oh, well, that is actually contrary to a, a confession of faith. We have one thing, I, I think, uh, in, in line, which is Jesus' exclusivity uh, as a way of leading to salvation. Um, now, I think we have that, and I, 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 I would love to hear you agree with that <laughs> uh, without a caveat. Uh, because no, if there's I, a caveat, then I, then it, we got to start over again. No, no, I have <laughs> to, I have to put the caveat in because um, there's there's a strong sense in which it feels like you're you're kind of reducing it to propositional uh, statements. And what I mean by that is, before you said, well, 
don't you believe like people there are people who believe jesus is divine but they're not christians um and so it's not it's not just propositional statements it's a lot more it's uh it's personal it's uh it's intellectual and it's also what is uh is true scriptural what i'm saying which i would hope that i thought you would actually agree with me is that like human beings are so complex that it's impossible to map onto a person uh exactly um uh what like to map onto a person and put them in a specific box even a person who's in a in a in a specific denomination now my position is that if someone says they're a christian i would say okay okay i believe you cool what does it mean to be a christian and then they say well you know it's, a, it's about being a good person you know trying as hard as you can to to live a good life and then i would say hold on a second um i understand like maybe someone told you that or you heard that somewhere or that's what you believe the bible says then i would go ahead and explain to them okay this is why uh that idea you have that belief you have is not a christian belief and i would go ahead and explain it to them uh with with patience and with time and with whatever i wouldn't just dismiss them and say okay you're not a christian next um and it feels like that's kind of the position uh you're kind of trying to put me in trying to box me into this position where i have to make a, a statement and be like uh like oh that person doesn't have perfect theology then they're not a christian but the thing with apollos this is the last thing i'm going to say is that it says he was explaining the, the way about jesus accurately he was saying jesus was the messiah um and 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 that's a loaded term and there are people who do say that like the muslims who say that but they mean a different thing so it's not always very cut and dry very black and white that's why i'm all for new ones i'm all for getting people to uh to flesh out their beliefs even more because i believe that helps them in the long run it helps them from apostasy it helps them from uh when, when life gets hard and they're like well i thought things were like this i thought this is what the bible said but the bible never said that that's what i'm primarily concerned with i'm not necessarily concerned with someone having the right exact 100 percent same doctrinal ideas that i do that's not all that christianity is about right so um again just kind of making a mental list here i'm i i know that it's being written down for the comments but um maybe you can um explain more talk further about what disqualifies someone from being a christian because right now we have everybody's a christian who says they are and then you can begin to disqualify based on certain things so what are some of the things that would that you would say no you are not a christian or uh no you were never a christian uh because you say that a lot a lot no i, and, I and only so, so you say clearly that. Uh -huh. you clearly believe that there are some disqualifiers so i'm trying to i'm trying to give you a forum to clearly articulate what they are okay well i wouldn't come at it in that direction that you're coming at it with. you have about, come at well, it from that direction <laughs> right so here here i am trying to explain to you finally after all these months and okay here oh. we go all right um i wouldn't come at it in the way of uh disqualification now there's obviously the question of apostasy which is its own different topic uh but how i would come at it is is this way like i've already laid out the framework as you ask someone who's talking to a human being not a robot are you a christian and they say yeah i'm a christian and then you go from there so so it's not less to disqualify them but more to qualify them and uh in order to be a christian you need uh three things and all these three things have to come together uh as a as a result of the work of the holy spirit uh you have to believe it you have to believe that your faith is 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 essential not just for uh society at large but it's it's a, it's essential for you that it's personal that it it that really 
what what Jesus said about human nature and how to be reconciled with God and how uh, there's no other way to be reconciled other than through him. You have to believe that personally. You have to see how uh, uh, Christianity is good news for the world, not just for your particular culture. You have to see how uh, it all comes together intellectually to, to give you a basis for all the things like uh, moral obligation and all these other things. All these three things have to come together in your mind. Now, the, the hard part is having to get that out of a person, which is not always easy. You can see, like there are children who are 10 years old who are saved, who are Christians, but you won't be able to get like a philosophical ex uh, uh, explanation out of them. I'm sorry to interrupt. Can yeah. you give me the three things again in bullet points? Because I, I, I missed I am, uh, In bullet points? All right, yeah, all right, just all right. because you say there are three things, and I... And I and it you, feels like you've moved away from that. No, no, I, I, you missed I out. Okay, three. Okay, personal. First one has to be personal to you. Uh, it has to be mm -hmm. number two. Intellectual has to make sense to you in terms of like how mm -hmm. this is is how this makes sense morally and all these other ways. And third has to be socially mm -hmm. uh, feasible for not just for your own culture, not for your own society, but for the entire world. Like those three things need to come together. Okay. So like. Yeah. So if I, if I let, just a clarifying question, then um, not a, not a rebuttal. Um, you you brought up a ten year old uh, who wouldn't be able to express that. They wouldn't express it but, the way I, I would express it. Okay, okay, but but if they don't have, if those things are not the case for them, and I'm I, I don't I, I want to be careful to. Uh, not mix their ability to confess what they believe with what they believe. But confession is, in fact, a part of what Christians are expected to do. So there may be some sense to which if you cannot confess or uh, uh, communicate what you believe, that maybe uh, you're not ready for faith um, and so if you're saying a 10 year old couldn't articulate it well what could they articulate that would convince you that they're a christian then because they can't say the three things that you're saying are necessary so what what could they say that would convince you i don't believe the whole um confession that you have to be able to articulate what you believe in order to with, be with fully, the mouth confession uh, is uh, it, i know i know what you're getting at again and i'm saying that the way you understand well, romans, it romans terms, 10 17 maybe uh, maybe you, we can i know i know but again like it seems like you have a very general view and you have, you have a very particular understanding of what it means i just i just sent out a particular it. passage of scripture uh, i i know so we, that can, we can take it outside of my view in my i i here's the thing just, i know we, you can quote the bible i know that but it is, it's one thing to quote the Bible, and it's another thing to to have uh, a holistic understanding of, of of the whole thing. So, okay, you're you're saying that you if, don't if agree with my body, with my not, formulation right. of confession, and I'm telling you where I get my formulation for confession yes. from. Yes, you that did. that means that you should not be able to just dismiss it out of hand, since I'm, I'm not giving you it out of I'm hand. giving you a source that should be meaningful to you. I'm not quoting Calvin, but I am quoting Paul. And that should be even more. And if I misunderstand Paul, you can look at it and say, here's where you went wrong. But you can't just hand wave it away and say, you don't like my interpretation of confession. When I am giving you, I am, I'm giving you a quote right out of the Bible. Uh, two things. Uh, yes, you did give me a quote from the Bible, and I didn't say that I'm dismissing it outright. Like, I would be more than happy to explain why I don't take it. Like, that's what I was actually building towards, explaining why I don't take the fact that uh, the way people take that verse, it means that you have to, like, you know, like the altar call thing. You have to come up front when the pastor calls you. You have to raise your hand, and you have to say the words, and that means that you've confessed with your mouth, and you've believed in your heart. Then, therefore... That means you're saved, even if you don't really fully believe or understand it. I'm I'm against that. That's what I'm pointing it out because I don't I don't I don't think that's what Paul is getting at in that verse. I believe what he's talking about is is an actual uh, belief that yes, you believe that this is it. 
this is this is it's non-negotiable but my point with 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 the 10 year old kid is that uh the the understanding that you have to have an accurate confession like you have to you know like you can't be a christian until you like fully understand everything that's that's the idea i'm refuting which you uh insist it has to be the case that someone has to have accurate theology and i'm saying that's not the case like you have to know certain things some things that are important right like apollos but also there's room for you to be corrected there's room for you to grow um i'm forgetting what it was i was answering beforehand the um three, the oh, yeah. three things uh, yeah before you mentioned the 10 year old right um who doesn't by the way uh, it, it is doesn't know anything about those three things and may or may not believe them because they can't articulate it they may not be able to articulate it the way i'm doing right now like i don't even expect or the, at the all person... right right this, uh, but but uh, but they're still a christian right and that's that's the confusing thing because i'm trying to zero in on what would make a person not a christian okay and well can i get you, to you, that or well, okay, you said there are these three things, and I'm not the one who interrupted you to bring up the 10-year-old. You brought up the 10-year-old who, right. can't, it was, who then it was can't part express of those answer. three things. Right. So I'm, I'm trying to answer you. It feels like today I'm trying to answer you, but you keep cutting me off every time. I'm like, here's the answer, right? I come at it this way. It's not, okay, let's, you're a Christian. Okay, let's find things that you don't believe so that I can disqualify you. That's not the mindset that I have, at least I'm talking for myself, right? Can only speak for myself here. The things that disqualify someone from being a Christian is if they say, I am not a Christian, which 100% of the people who apostatize from Christianity say, they say, I'm not a Christian. Other people say, I was never a Christian. Other people say, you know, I only went there because my family made me or because I was in this tough situation, but now I realize it's all nonsense it's all baloney or like nietzsche would say i realize it's for wimps uh therefore i am not a christian that's one way someone can be disqualified another way someone can be disqualified is again if they see christianity as a way in which you do works so that god can accept you so you have to be a good person you have to be a good neighbor and this is the sin behind the sin where everyone in the world who does not believe in the gospel is in some sense trying to be their own savior and their own lord they're trying to uh, earn uh salvation for themselves by being a good person by their own standards someone who says they're a christian and they still understand salvation like that there's a good chance that they are not a christian even though they say they are uh there's a chance that they're not when they when i ask them what the gospel is and they say the gospel is about trying to be a good person or you know like you know we're all just good people and in the end god is going to weigh the good works and the bad works and if you have more good than bad then god will let you into heaven it doesn't matter who they are someone who says that is not a christian does that answer your question yeah point of fair clarification because you said it two different ways you said a couple of times there's a chance they may not be a christian and then the last time you said they are not a christian so i would ask you to clarify which is it is it they could be a christian but just saying the wrong things or they're definitely not a christian it's it's both of them because there's a chance in which someone can say that i know someone personally uh who said that like as recently as two years ago mm -hmm. and and then yeah had to talk to them have conversations and now they they they're like wow yeah i was wrong about all of that now i now i understand it more accurately and here's the thing uh okay, it's were not, they, were, it's were not, they a christian at the time or did they just become a christian when they understood them more accurately they were just becoming a christian because that's how they understood it that's how they've always heard it in their life they've always understood it a certain way mm -hmm. um and 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 the thing is that there's always this like, Gnosticism lurking in the, in the background where like, they just want to know like, okay, uh, how do you know that you're not Christian <laughs> and all these other things. And it's like, uh, the Bible gives you principle, principles, it, it gives you doctrines, it gives you uh, moral things. Even we haven't even gone into the moral things of it. Um, and I don't come at it the way you do. And that's the biggest difference because I see there's a big, approach in how someone can 
uh, either uh, not be a Christian and say like, well, okay, that what I'm saying is fair, but you don't think it's fair at all because I, for whatever reason, uh, I still not, I'm still not clear on that. And I, all I'm saying is that I let people be people. I let people be fallible with the, with the hope, with the expectation that, that they'll come to a more accurate understanding of who God is, of who Christ is, without me having put put them in a box and saying, uh, you're not a Christian because you don't believe in infant baptism or something like that or something crazy. But like that this is where it gets lost in translation where an atheist has to like it has to be a hundred percent, it's all or nothing. Well, I don't have that view and most of Christianity has never had that view. Okay. Um, let's stop there. Um, let's, let's pick it up uh, on the question of essential doctrines. Um, because I've, I've tried to steer toward doctrines a little bit, but that, that definitely seems to be a, uh, a, a hard subject to broach. So I'll give you a week to think about that. Uh, I want to... Uh, I want to talk about essential doctrines versus unessential doctrines. Uh, how do you know? Because it's, if a person, I'm again assuming that if a person does not affirm the essential doctrines, they wouldn't be a Christian. But we haven't really made a lot of progress, I think, in what the essential doctrines are that they would need to affirm. And let's say they didn't affirm the essential doctrines at first, but then they were taught more correctly later. Does it mean they were not a Christian before they learned uh, better? Did they just become a Christian? Do they think that? I mean, right now, as far as Ayan is concerned, Richard Dawkins is a Christian. Um, Again, I, I can't take Ayan's... Well, hang on. I, was, I wasn't... I, okay. Did you just interrupt me? I, I am so offended. I don't... I'm I'm broken. Uh, where was I? <laughs> um, so, uh, Ion says proudly and publicly, and I don't think facetiously, that Richard Dawkins is a Christian person because she believes that cultural Christianity and uh, and and good living is still Christianity. Um, and so, I would say that she definitely has a different understanding of Christianity than what I do. At the same time. I am the person who has said for years that the only thing we know about people that we don't know as, as of whether they're a Christian or not is whether they say they are. That's the only criteria that we have access to. And at the end of the day, it's not our ability to sort out who was actually a Christian who, and who wasn't that matters. Furthermore, I don't think there's any, any harm, even any uh, theological harm. This is maybe something that can be challenged uh, next week or so, or in the comments, to treat someone as if they were a Christian on their word that they're a Christian, and then, and, and then just treat them as a brother. Because at the end of the day, you're not the one uh, who judges whether they are or not. Um, you don't have the sacred book of life. You don't know what names are in it. And no one does. So I think that there can be quite a bit of theological harm. Uh, by theological harm, I mean things that would actually go against Scripture. To treat someone who is a brother as if they weren't because they didn't meet your understanding of the criteria. So I am... Uh, you know, with Christian hat on, uh, on firmly on the side of saying that if a person says they're a Christian, they're a Christian. And the evaluation of whether a person is actually a Christian or was actually a Christian is one of those things where humans are trying to take on a role of God, who is the only one who has access to the book. Uh, that said, um, Christian is a specific thing. 
it's not a it's not a generic thing and christians who take christianity seriously believe that there are specific propositions that you have to believe specific uh, a way of being that you have to be uh, have a specific personal relationship uh, intellectual uh, uh, relationship uh, with propositions and whatever the third thing was that you have to be and I am interested in exploring what those things are so that we can at least for the sake of our discussions better define what the heck we mean by Christian because right now I am less uh sure of what you mean by Christian than I was before we started and maybe that's a good thing and maybe we can begin to build some understanding next week all right um so this is my closing statement right um I'll, I'll admit that this took a turn that I, I didn't expect to talk about Ayan Ali for like 40 minutes but that's that's how it is um my my proposition has been I feel like maybe if I've not explained it the best way let me try and do it in in a very short duration in the next few minutes my proposition is this like because we're talking about the real world not just online which unfortunately for most people is where life is lived what I'm talking about is like if I meet a person in life and they say I am a Christian and I'll say, okay, you're a Christian, all right, so tell me what does that entail? Now, this is a conversation that for sure has happened. Now, what, what happens most of the time is people will say, you know, I believe that Jesus died for my sins, and that if I believe in him, uh, all my sins are forgiven, and I, I can have a relationship with God, and um, I can live for him and, and do good works, and I'm like, yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's a good uh, intro into the discussion, into the topic, if I'm talking to someone. The issue that I most often run into, though, is when I'll encounter someone who says, I am a Christian, but you are not a Christian because of X, Y, Z. And I'll be like, okay, why, why is that? And then they'll tell me, you see, because Joseph Smith or because Charles Taze Russell, that's, that's the direction that, like, I'd say, like, 90% of the time it happens. The, the percent of the time, the, 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 the other percentage that is being talked about specifically about someone having uh, bad beliefs or not having accurate beliefs has to do with uh, someone being taught a certain way because pe everyone is different. Everyone comes at Christianity from different directions. Other people come through it because uh, they grew up in the church. Other people come into it because they, they, they were in a difficult spot in life. Other people, all sorts of reason because the gospel is for everyone. And... The, the thing that I'm or like we are trying to avoid as good faithful Christians is to not go against scripture and 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 make other people to stumble based on our uh, theological understanding. So uh, if I said the word Nestorianism, like there's a good chance most people don't even know what that is. But Nestorianism is a heresy. Now, I don't expect someone who just became a Christian to know what Nestorianism even is. Uh, but that's not something that I'll say, okay, well, because you believe that, then that means that, wow, how awful of you, you're definitely, like, I don't gatekeep it like that. There's definitely gatekeeping happening, but it's not in the way that you think it works. Now, unless my memory is failing me, uh, you used to be part of a denomination that said that, okay, we're the only church, everyone else has got it wrong. Well, I'm, I don't think that's valid at all. And so in a sense... I don't see it the way that you do. I don't see it as black and white. I see lots of nuance. I see people are different. While at the same time, recognizing that it's important for people to believe the right things about God, the right things about salvation, and the right things about the work of Christ. So those are the three things, the three main essential things about Christianity, the nature of God, nature of salvation, and who Jesus was. Those are the main things. If you've got those then we can talk about anything else and still be Christians. Um, but, but I don't 
I don't see that nuance in, in how you see things. And that's, that's the biggest difference. And, and for me, like the biggest thing, again, it may not come off online because people are always their worst selves on the forums and everything. But my goal isn't to to go around gatekeeping and telling people you're not a, like the only time I say someone's not a real or true Christian is if they tell me I'm not a I'm not a Christian. This thing is stupid. I can't believe people believe in this stupid religion and I'll be like, OK, you're not you're not a true Christian. Right. You're not a Christian like you like if, if you say you were a Christian for 20 years and not once did you ever at any time believe any of it, then I can say yeah you weren't a christian and i should be able to say that without fear and without someone getting offended and so that's where i'm coming at it i'm not coming at it in terms of casting doubt on a whole uh crowd of people uh because christianity is personal it's individual it has to do with an individual's longings and the holy spirit is the one who ultimately converts so i'm not trying to override the work of the holy spirit and at the same time, I'm not trying to just let everyone in like a like a Unitarian would and say like, oh, Muslims are Christians too because they also believe in Jesus. Like, there's there's nuance and there's uh there's accurate there's a way to navigate this without ending up being Pharisaical about it. That's that's the main thing I'm concerned with, and so I hope that that's able to come across to at least one person to know that it's not not a question of just having the right beliefs. It's a lot more than just having the correct beliefs. Okay. So we'll see if we can pick up next time and dig into some of the specifics, maybe even look at some of the famous creeds and confessions uh, and dig into a little bit of that. Uh, so you know what to do. Skepticsandseekers.squarespace.com Log in your Discuss account, discuss away, send an email, skepticsandseekers at gmail.com. Until the next time, I'll see you in the comments. And in the meantime, I was in fact a Christian, and now I'm out. <laughs>